Hello everyone, I'm Cindy Seip, your professional virtual assistant and Christian transcriptionist in beautiful Frankfort, Kentucky. Today I hope to share some very valuable information for at least one listener out there. Since the information I'll be sharing is so near and dear to my heart, I will be sharing it in a very unique way, utilizing many of the gifts I've been blessed with. So if you hear me break out into song, don't think I've forgotten the topic at hand. It all ties in very nicely together with one another. November is National Epilepsy Awareness Month. How much do you know about the disorder? Each year, 300,000 new cases are diagnosed and 45,000 of those cases are children under the age of 15. Would you know what to do if you were given the diagnosis for yourself, your child, a friend, or a loved one? I would. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Ten years ago, not too long after getting saved, I found a scripture that really spoke to me. It said that I shall publish with a voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. I honestly believe that this video is part of my destiny. To not only equip you with information about my Savior, my healer, my deliverer, but to also make you aware of the disorder of epilepsy that I've been delivered from. Thirty-one years ago at the age of eighteen and in my first year of college, I was informed that I had an extremely large tumor that filled the entire right hemisphere of my brain. Surgery was inevitable, and with the skilled hands of Dr. Matt J. Likovic, head neurosurgeon at the UC Hospital in Cincinnati at the time, my surgery was a complete success. Dr. Matt Likovic removed the non-cancerous interventricular meningioma utilizing laser surgery, a relatively new technology in 1982. I was able to return to a relatively normal lifestyle, returning to college to complete my associate degree with the students that I had begun with, and graduated with a 3.467 GPA, despite seizure activity I was experiencing. I suffered my first grandma seizure several months after the surgery. Then Dr. Grinvosky, my neurologist from UC Hospital, added phenobarbital and neurontin to control the seizure activity. The medications controlled future full-blown seizures. It was necessary for me to continue on these medications for many years to function normally in society, but not without challenges. At the age of 32, and because neurology is not an exact science, I began having multiple seizures, many seizures daily, despite the medication I was taking. At the age of 38, and after exhausting all medications for six years, trying every combination possible to solve the seizure disorder, I was diagnosed with a chronic, uncontrollable seizure disorder. As a mother of two young children and a wife, this was devastating news, but I never lost hope. The Bible tells us that hope deferred maketh the heart sick, so never lose your hope. When the hope you had has disappeared and you've lost your will to try And you think your ship has just come in but it keeps on passing by When you've almost gained the victory and you've left the rest behind And the marathon has slowed its pace as you reach the finish line But you round the final corner and you fall Depend on me, depend on me. When your life is filled with emptiness and your friends have said goodbye and that hill becomes a mountain as your troubles multiply. When your trials get too much to bear and you're standing all alone And that feeling way down deep inside is the worst you've ever known And you need someone to count on, but no one's there Depend on me You can always depend on Him. He's the rock of your salvation. 
He's the strength of your countenance. He's all you'll ever need. He's a friend that will never, ever leave you nor forsake you. He's your all-sufficient, faithful God. In Him you stand complete. I do hope these songs and these testimonies have ministered life to each and every one of you. God has definitely had His hand all over my life. And the fun part is that life isn't over yet. Let's not forget the main purpose of this entire topic. November is National Epilepsy Awareness Month. Where would you turn if you were given the same diagnosis that I was given? Do you know where your rock of salvation would be? Do you know what you would stand on? I hope what I've shared so far is a form of encouragement to you. Should you or someone you know ever be diagnosed with this disorder? Because it's not a death threat. At first I was in denial, and then I tried to hide the disorder. But it so consumed my life that I had to find real answers. During those six years, when things seemed to be at their worst, I got down to 118 pounds. I went to my family doctor and decided enough was enough, and I wanted real answers. My family physician, Dr. David Gunderman in Hillsboro, Ohio, referred me to the Epilepsy Monitoring Unit at UC Hospital. Under the direction of Dr. David Ficker, he and his exceptional team of seizure specialists worked tirelessly with me to find answers. Today, I am a success story for this team. Through a series of tests and then ultimately seizure surgery, a two-step surgery a week apart, I gained seizure freedom. In June of 2001, under the skilled hands of Dr. Ye, neurosurgeon at the UC Hospital, he successfully completed a partial lobectomy which freed me of my 19-year seizure disorder, and I am completely seizure-free. Not completely medication-free, but not as dependent on the medication. I only take one medication now, whereas I used to take 13 pills a day and still had simple partial, partial complex seizures daily. So I live a life free from seizures, free from all side effects, free from almost all medications, and free from sin and condemnation. Throughout the month of November, many people, individually or as a group, get creative and share their respect for epilepsy awareness by wearing purple or lavender. Some wear the color in their hair, others wear ribbons, and still others get very creative by wearing colored statements on t-shirts, proclaiming their victory over seizures and epilepsy. The point is to make some noise in any creative way that will attract attention of the general public in order to create awareness and educate those in need while accepting those that are a part of the epilepsy community. Why purple or lavender? Either color has represented epilepsy awareness since ancient times. It's been recorded Vincent Van Gogh used the color lavender to ease his seizures. He would paint in lavender during the onset of a seizure and supposedly ease the severity of the seizure. Many have reported the scent of lavender being very useful in seizure management. Here's some thoughts to ponder. According to the Center for Disease Control, epilepsy is as common as breast cancer affecting approximately 50 million people worldwide and 3 million people in the United States. Epilepsy is a chronic neurological disorder and it can happen to anyone. It occurs across all ages, races, and genders. Here's one of those thoughts that really affected me part of my adult life. Uncontrolled seizures and medication side effects pose challenges to independent living, learning, and employment, according to the Epilepsy Foundation. People with this disease have a difficult time getting hired because of fear. People with epilepsy are discriminated against when it comes to getting a job. Education and awareness of commonality of the disease will help eliminate discrimination. I personally chose to rise above the norm and be victorious over the disorder. I was challenged but not defeated, hopeless but not without hope. I'm a better person for having gone through what I've gone through. One of the most valuable things that I learned was that God did not give me that disorder. Because He lives I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because. Thank you.
Be aware of people around you. Three million people in the United States suffer from this disorder. Yes, I've had three major brain surgeries, and yes, for six years of my life, I felt like I was on an endless roller coaster. But God had an end for me. He had an expected end, because you can't kill destiny. That is the whole point, not only to educate each and every one of you of the disorder that so consumes the lives of millions of people, but that there is a God in heaven who wants the best for each and every one of his children. He supplied for all of my needs. He was there every step of the way. The most important point to all of this is you can't kill destiny. I'm in the heart of my destiny. God has blessed me with two beautiful children, a business that's growing and prospering, a very healthy life, and my spirit man continues to grow daily because I feed on God's Word. You never know who you might meet that might be affected by this disorder. So I hope you found it helpful. Again, I'm Cindy Sipe. I typically come to you as your professional virtual assistant and Christian transcriptionist. I am those things. But I am also an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. I am victorious over that disease. It was a challenge, but it was not a death threat. I found victory, and you can find it as well. Well, folks, as you can tell, I've been celebrating National Epilepsy Awareness Month. November is National Epilepsy Awareness Month. After 31 years, three major brain surgeries, six years of uncontrolled seizure activity, countless medications, and an unbelievable amount of challenges in my life, I'm here to tell you I am completely seizure-free. I've learned several things along the way, one of which is, he is the Lord that healeth me. He is the Lord my healer. He sent his word and healed my disease. He is the Lord my healer. And one of the other very important things I learned is how beautiful the Lord made me through that entire process. Please understand me. God did not give me the disorder. But through that disorder, what the enemy intended for evil, God has turned around for his good. Because to God be the glory, great things he hath done. I'm thankful, so very thankful for all of the doctors, the specialists, the surgeons that God put in my path. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Each and every one of those people were a divine appointment for me to keep me in my destiny. Remember, you can't kill destiny. And throughout that entire process, I can honestly sing this song to you because I believe this is what's happened in my life. Something beautiful, something good, all my confusion, he understood. And he made something very beautiful of my life. Again, this is Cindy Sipe, your professional virtual assistant and Christian transcriptionist from beautiful Frankfort, Kentucky. I'm also the founder and lead virtual assistant for OPTT Incorporated, Office Professionals Temporary Team. My life continues to prosper. And I believe I'm evidence that there truly is life after a seizure disorder. Let me close by saying this. Beloved, above all things, God wants you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. That includes your brain. I want each and every one of you to prosper in everything that you do. I hope you walk away from this video learning more about the disorder, but more importantly, maybe being a little more aware of your surroundings. Because you just never know. The next person you walk up to may either be affected by or is being affected by this disorder.